designed to complement the thought of the permanent problem and the way for the public point power station to address the call question of the facility at that facility. Tonight's information session will is not an official part of the public comment period and questions and comments made during the information session are not part of the record. There will be an opportunity at the public hearing to provide comments at that time. We will go through the presentation. After the presentation, we have technical staff available in the next room who will be able to talk on different aspects of the solid waste permit in the facility. And we'll go over those tables and those staff that's available at the end of the presentation. As part of this presentation, we'll start with giving a regulatory framework overview. Then we'll then talk about the facility background provide some overview of the permit and permit highlight, and then close by providing information regarding the public participation and the public comment on this opportunity. There's two primary regulatory frameworks or rules overseeing the solid waste permitting process related to the closure of the coal production surface impoundments of the power stations. One is the EPA final rule on the disposal of coal combustion residuals. This was the EPA rule that was finalized in 2015 nationally to address coal combustion residual surface impoundments and landfills. This EPA rule provides operational and closure standards for the surface impoundments. Operational requirements include things like a fugitive dust control plan and inspections, and of course provides the closure standards for the surface impoundments. The EPA rule also has groundwater monitoring requirements as a part of any of the surface impoundments. And specifically, the EPA rule addresses closure and provides two options that are available for closing the surface impoundment, either capping or closure by removal. The other uh, regulatory requirements that provide a framework for the, for the permitting process is the Virginia Solid Waste Management Regulations. These regulations actually adopted and incorporated the EPA federal CCR rule, but it also provides additional requirements under that framework. There are technical requirements related to the closure, the groundwater, and the post-closure. Additionally, there's a requirement for financial assurance under those regulations. Specifically, the solid waste management regulations in that framework provides the permitting process, which is the process that we're in now, and the oversight by the department, and includes that public participation element, including the ability to provide public comment. Good evening. Can everyone hear me okay? My name is Richard Doucette. I'm the Northern Regional Office Land Protection and Revitalization Program Manager. It's my pleasure to welcome you tonight to the information session. Uh, as you can see, we have a map of the area. We have 95 running off to your left, running north and south. We have the town of Dumfry. And down where it's blue, you can see Ash Pond ABC, that is Possum Point Power Station. A little bit on the facility. The facility started operating back in 1948 and switched over from coal to natural gas in 2003. They do actually do some backup for oil. Uh, during the operation history, they did have five coal ash surface impoundments, and they were lettered A, B, C, D, and E. Again, there are different dates when they were constructed for their use, and the size varied over time uh, depending on how much area was needed for the coal ash. Here we have a closer blow up of the area. Uh, this is a little bit disorienting because north is to the left instead of being up, so please turn your head and look. Uh, we have Quantico Creek. All the way to the upper right corner is the power station. Then we have Quantico Creek again running from the, in the bottom corner. We have the, the ponds. We have pond A, B, and C in the upper right, pond D further back, upper left, and pond E. As part of the solid waste management regulations, we developed this solid waste permit, which includes four important parts. There's closure, post-closure, groundwater monitoring, and surface water monitoring. Dominion Power has proposed two different alternatives. Pond A, B, C, and E will be closed by the ash removal. Pond D, which is an existing surface impoundment, will be closed and placed with a cover. Right now, the 50s permit is in place to manage water in the pond, so any rainwater that falls in the pond is managed as being pumped up to pond D. This permit is really designed to pick up where the 50s permit left off. Here's a little bit closer look at ponds A, B, and C. 
the dots around it are the monitoring wells, which we will discuss further about the groundwater monitoring portion. The dashed line is the limits of closure by removal, where they will excavate the, the coal ash. Here we have Pond E. Again, some of the dots are monitoring wells. And the dashed line is the limits by closure by removal. So the closure of Pond A, B, and C, as I mentioned before, these will be excavated. The ash is being excavated and trucked over to Pond D. Uh, once it's removed, it will be confirmed that it's dug up and removed through visual confirmation. After it reaches final closure and everything is done, soil will be able to be added, property graded, and vegetation established. So people may ask, how do you visually certify it? The visual inspection is done by a certified licensed professional engineer, and they go out and look at the, the facility to see that all the ash has been removed. After they think it's all done, they do an additional six inches of excavation. Then there's a second visual inspection. Then the DEQ will come out and do their visual inspection. That is just for the soil removal. There will be additional groundwater monitoring that will be done uh, as part of the including wells surrounding and a few wells within ponds A, B, and C or pond E. To try and show you how visual would work, we have the light gray in the front and the darker gray in the back. That is coal ash. As you can see in the back, the orange material is a native soil, and they would differentiate using color. Now, Pond D was decided to, uh, the proposal from Dominion was to have that in place. While Pond D was originally constructed in the 1960s, it was upgraded in 1998. That included excavation of the ash that was in there. They did a slurry wall to protect the groundwater, and they heightened the uh, embank earthen embankment and dam to allow more surface area for coal ash disposal. Here we have a close-up of it. You can see to the little right-hand corner is the, the embankment along Poppin Point Road. And as we move back, you can see the limits of excavation, the wastewater treatment system that's running under the 50s program. And you can see the limits of the closure cap where they will be capping over the existing pound after all the water has been removed and the, the soil has been excavated and compacted. The capping system will be closed in place and it will consist of a series of different layers. Uh, at, starting at the top, we have vegetation trying to help reduce erosion. Then we have a 24 inch soil layer which includes six inches of a vegetative support growth layer 18 inches of soil layer. Then we go to a drainage area, which is a drainage layer helps to whisk away any of infiltration from the rain that would go through the soil. Then underneath that we have the liner, which is a, four, a 0.04 inches uh, low level density polyethylene liner or plastic liner. Underneath that they have a cushion geotextile to help protect the liner. And underneath that they have some prepared subgrade where they will be rolling out the material to be ready to put the liner on top of it or the cushion. Excuse me, you said but it will be. It doesn't sound like you're even going to consider public comments. Well, I, I appreciate the comment. We're going to hold all questions until the end. Are you so going to that, consider public comments? Well, comments will be made on February 16th. The comment period is open right now. But if you could hold all your questions until the end, we can address that. Mark, it will be as if this is a done deal. Uh, I appreciate your comment again. We will answer that at the end. All the design criteria is in accordance with the Virginia Solid Waste Management Regulations and the EPA's final CCR rules. After the closure activities have been completed, post-closure will begin. That includes maintaining the cover system to make sure that any grass on there is mowed, uh, mowed and maintained. If there's any type of erosion, it's fixed and repaired. That also includes conducting groundwater and surface water monitoring. If there is an, an, any type of issue, then that could require corrective action. And the post-closure period requires a 30-year period where groundwater monitoring, surface water monitoring will, will uh, take place before it can close. And that will include DEQ looking at what, what's in place before any determination is considered. And that will involve public participation before any post-closure permit would be terminated. Uh, groundwater monitoring, again, it's being done in accordance with the EPA and the Virginia Solid Waste Management Rule. Um, we're, we're looking at semi-annual monitoring, and it's monitoring the uppermost aquifer. We'll be looking at groundwater protection standards, and it'll provide information should remediation be required. 
Here we have the ponds, the dots around there are different sets of wells. We have four wells around ponds A, B, and C to assist with closure, one up gradient, three down gradient. We have four wells associated with pond E. And then we have a series of 10 wells surrounding pond D, which is it will be left in place. You'll again have two wells up gradient, eight wells down gradient, and these wells will be, will be allowed to see whether or not the, the groundwater is having any impact related to the coal ash impoundment. The groundwater sampling and analysis list has actually come from three different sources. It's based upon the EPA final rule on 40 CFR 257, the Virginia Solid Waste Management Rule, primarily the inorganics, and those constituents included with the 50s permit. Here's the complete list of all the constituents that will be analyzed for during the groundwater monitoring semi-annual events. If I haven't mentioned, this presentation will be put up on the web tomorrow, and information, any questions can be asked next door in the Q&A session. During the groundwater monitoring session, groundwater protection standards will be established. The groundwater monitoring uses these groundwater protection standards to help us identify when the need is to move into the next phase, which would be corrective action. The Safe Drinking Water Act uses maximum contaminant levels, which will be used for the constituents that already have them, such as arsenic. For constituents that do not have a quality of water quality level, such as cobalt, that will be established using background concentrations from around the site. So if we have any type of exceedance of the groundwater protection standards, DEQ will be notified. Uh, after additional study is done and to see if it's statistically significant increase over the background or the GPS, then the facility will move to corrective action. Now corrective action is where the facility does a complete assessment of the nature and extent of the groundwater contaminant plume and move into a remediation so that's a protective of human health, the environment, and the environmental receptors. Surface water monitoring is being included with this phase to look to see if the groundwater is impacting or affecting the surface water. There's a minimum of at least 12 near shore samples, and these will be sampled quarterly. Again, they'll be sampled for similar constituents that we're looking for in the groundwater, including some additional field parameters to help with the analysis. Samples will be from the surface water column, They'll be analyzed for dissolved constituents and compared with water quality standards. Or with facilities uh, with constituents that have had uh, exceedances of the groundwater protection standards, we'll also look at those. Again, if we have an exceedance of the water quality standard or the groundwater protection standard, then we would initiate corrective action. So to conclude and provide information on the public participation process of the draft solid waste permit, you just heard some of the highlights of the proposed draft solid waste permit. You have the opportunity during this comment period, which runs from January 13th to March 10th, to provide comments to the department on the proposed draft solid waste permit and those elements that you've heard about and will learn additionally um, about tonight. Comments may be submitted in writing to Possum Point Power Station Waste Permit at de2.gov. And we ask that your comments include your name and address so that we can ensure that we address and have that information to respond to any comments. You can also submit comments orally. Those can be done at the public hearing. That's February 16th at this same location, starting at 7 p.m. There will be staff available for an additional read question and answer session beginning at 6 p.m. that evening. And if for some reason in the event of inclement weather, the school is closed that evening, then we do have an additional date scheduled for February 23rd. And you can contact Richard Dusset to find out in the event of inclement weather if the facility is closed that night for the public hearing. You can get additional information on our DEQ website at www.deq.virginia.gov. We do already have posted there the draft permit and public notice. We will also be posting the information sheets that will be available tonight regarding the different technical aspects of the permit, as well as this presentation will be posted there as well. You can also sign up if you haven't done so already for our news feed. That'll provide notices of any of our draft solid waste permits and, of course, notices of any final permit actions. The second portion of our info session tonight includes a technical uh, session that will be next door where our technical staff will be available to answer and talk about different specific aspects, both of the solid waste permit and the facility. So we'll have a table one that will have general process and information. If you're not sure where to go to ask a particular question, you want to learn more about the process or the participation, you can direct your question to the folks at that table. We've got table two, which will have folks that are able to answer questions related to closures specific to the solid waste permit. 
So this is an aspect related to any of the closure by removal or the cutting. There will be individuals available at Table 3 who can provide information on the groundwater and surface water monitoring and additional technical aspects related to that. Table 4, surface water discharges are pursuant to the VIPTES permit, so many of the permitting requirements or limits related to any of the dewatering or discharging, folks will be able to answer that. A lot of folks that we talk about surface water quality and ambient water quality in Quantico Creek, results and information related to that. And we also have DDH who will be available to answer any questions related to drinking water or to your private well water testing. So we encourage you at this time, you can go over there and that's where we'll be able to answer any specific technical questions. We aren't going to be able to take questions here. All the technical staff who are able to answer any of the questions related to the program will be available for you to answer questions there. Thank you. Thank you. 